This guy is so desperate, that he's about to drink his own urine. He holds the urine, feeling disgusted, but to survive, he gulps it down. The sharp taste of uric acid is overwhelming, and he throws up immediately. It was meant to rehydrate him, but now he's lost more fluid than he gained. Is he going to die of thirst and starvation? Who will save him? The men can't stand the hunger anymore. Seeing a cockroach, he's reminded of survivalist Bear Grylls, and eats it. It turns out he is trapped, in a 35th floor abandoned high-rise in India, where nothing is sturdy, except for the security door, which is the strongest due to the high number of thieves. How will he ever get out? His name is John and he is a wage earner. John brings his girlfriend home for the night, but as soon as they enter, they find his roommates, a group of burly men, passed out drunk in the cramped living room. The house reeks of sweaty feet, and the small room houses eight people. After some internal struggle, his girlfriend follows John into the bedroom. They find a way to be intimate in a tight space. Later, John proposes to his girlfriend, but she refuses, because she doesn't want to live in a rental apartment forever. John wants to buy a house to keep his girlfriend, but real estate in New Delhi is expensive. So, John decides to rent a place, but the monthly rent is still expensive. John is in a tough spot, when he meets a man, who claims he can find him a cheap place. The place comes fully furnished with a TV, fridge, and air conditioner. It turns out this man is a shady real estate agent. Never trust anyone too easily. In his haste to rent a place, John follows the agent to an abandoned high-rise. The building is uninhabited, except for an old security guard, who has a hearing problem. They go straight to the 35th floor, and to John's surprise, the place is not bad. It has a bright living room, and a spacious balcony, with all the furniture he could need. Thinking he might win his girlfriend back, John is thrilled, and pays three months rent up front. But he has no idea that this is the beginning of his nightmare. John moves his belongings, into his new home, and the first morning brings trouble. Have you ever been so unlucky? John wakes up to find that his phone, which he left to charge overnight, didn't charge. He presses the plug, and it seems there's a poor connection. He goes to the bathroom to wash up, only to find there's no water in the pipes, and the same in the kitchen. With no other choice, he uses mineral water to clean up, but he's about to be late for work. John leaves his home, and presses the elevator button, then realizes he forgot his phone, which is still charging at home. John uses his key to open the door, and rushes to get his phone, but in the rush, he accidentally leaves the key hanging outside the door. A gust of wind blows, and the door closes, leaving John locked out of his home. John desperately tries to turn the lock, but it snaps off. In frustration, John kicks the door, but it doesn't budge. Locked inside his apartment, John finds tools to try and remove the door lock. He uses every tool he has, but the door won't budge. Getting desperate, John kicks the door again and again, followed by a fierce kick. But in India cities, where thieves are common, the security door is the strongest. John takes out his phone, to call a locksmith, but the person on the other end keeps asking. What kind of lock does he have? Before he can even give his address, his phone dies. John rushes to charge it, but when he turns on the air conditioner, the whole house loses power, and the circuit breaker trips, with no other choice. John keeps trying to pry the door open. He uses pliers to smash the door, but accidentally injures his hand in the process. John howls in pain, and barely manages to bandage his wound. The man is locked inside his home. He stands by the window, shouting for the security guard. Feeling like he's tearing his throat apart, but at 35 stories up, the old man can't hear a thing. John becomes even more anxious. He shouts through the door crack into the hallway. Help! Is there anyone there? But the unfinished building is deserted. Not even a ghost in sight. John can only return to the balcony, and continue shouting for help, hoping someone below can hear him. But from morning till night, his voice goes hoarse, and no one pays any attention. John takes out his phone battery, and rubs it furiously on his leg, almost wearing a hole in his pants. But the battery still won't charge. In anger, John throws the phone away. Is he really going to be stuck here? Is God freaking joking with me? John calms down, and takes stock of his food supplies. The man is trapped in the abandoned high-rise, with only a bottle of water and a pack of cookies left. Unsure of how long they'll last, he spends a night filled with anxiety. The next morning, he finds that the only bottle of water has been knocked over, and spilled on the floor, due to his forgetting to put the cap back on, with no water left. He must get out even sooner. He picks up a nearby fan, and throws it at the door handle, smashing it to pieces. Then, he grabs a metal rack and smashes it against the door, but the wheels fall off, and the door still won't budge. In anger, John thinks, if no one notices me, I'll throw something big down. He moves a television out, and violently removes its base, then throws it downstairs, hoping to attract the attention of the security guard. 
The television crashes with a loud noise, but the old man, who's listening to the radio, and has poor hearing, doesn't notice at all. If you're trapped in a high-rise, what do you do? John finds some cardboard boxes, tears them into pieces, and uses toothpaste to write a message on them. Help from the 35th floor of the abandoned building. Save me please. He throws several pieces of cardboard and some tubes of toothpaste out of the window with the message, but they either land on the roof or in an uninhabited area, all in vain. At this point, the toothpaste is also used up. He unwraps the bandage from his hand, grits his teeth in pain, and tears open his already healing wound, using his own blood to write a final plea for help. This message lands on a family's clothes rack, and he waits by the window. Finally, a woman comes up to collect the laundry, but she doesn't notice the message, and leaves with the clothes. John is very frustrated, cold, and hungry. He removes the water heater, and pours it into his mouth, but there's no water inside. John looks at the water in the toilet bowl, thinking to himself, do I really have to drink toilet water? I'd rather drink my own urine. The man holds his own urine, feeling disgusted, but to survive, he pours it into his mouth. After drinking, he rushes to the bathroom and vomits violently. Unexpectedly, he's startled by a mouse next to him and faints. John, who has been trapped in the isolated building for several days, has run out of food and water. His only cookies were stolen by a mouse. The next day, he wakes up, to the sound of water in the kitchen. John is about to collect the water, when he sees a mouse staring at him from the side. John dares not approach, and watches helplessly as the water flows away. The mouse is both hateful and terrifying. He can only close the kitchen door and continue to look for a way out. John turns the elastic band from his underwear, into a makeshift slingshot, waiting for someone downstairs to appear. Trapped on the 35th floor of a high-rise, John modifies his underwear into a slingshot, and shoots stones. Finally, he successfully draws the attention of a woman, who sees the message on the cardboard. John is ecstatic, thinking he might be saved. The woman approaches the abandoned building with the cardboard in hand, but as she arrives at the entrance, she is stopped by the security guard. The old man insists that no one could possibly live in the abandoned building. The woman is still a bit skeptical, but has no choice but to turn back. John, watching from upstairs, sees his last hope walk away, and desperately bangs on the door that will never open. His emotions are on the verge of collapse. By nightfall, Jack made a foolish decision. By the balcony's iron railing, he set fire to strips of discarded cloth and a mattress, hoping to draw attention. It was only when the flames became uncontrollable, that he realized, oh, it seems I might get burned to death myself. So, he hastily took off his clothes, and desperately tried to put out the fire. John has been trapped in the abandoned building for 36 hours, and he's starving. Seeing a cockroach in the corner, he's reminded of survivalist Bear Grylls, and resorts to eating the cockroach. In desperation, it starts to rain outside, a much-needed downpour. John drinks his fill, and fills all the pots with water, but to prepare for a long-term battle. This is far from enough. He removes the toilet tank and hangs it by the window, connects the pipe from under the sink to the tank, and uses a woven bag to channel the rainwater into the tank, creating a large funnel. He quickly fills all the containers and the refrigerator with water. With this water, John can hold out for a few more days. A few more days pass, and a bird flies in through the window. To survive, John, who has been a vegetarian, also has to kill the bird. After roasting the bird meat, a mouse is attracted by the aroma and sneaks over. John goes to the kitchen to get utensils, and when he turns around, he sees the mouse gnawing on the bird meat. Anger overcomes his fear, the only food is eaten by the mouse. John picks up a tool and chases after the mouse, giving it a good beating. Looking at the bird meat that the mouse has gnawed on, he puts it in his mouth, with food and water. John gradually regains his strength. The balcony on the 30th floor has no railing, and if he could climb down from the 35th floor, he could escape the abandoned building. He finds a metal plate from an electrical appliance, and uses it as a saw blade to cut through the iron railings, then heats the cut area with fire. He continues this operation for several days, catching insects to eat when he's hungry, and drinking his stored water when he's thirsty, but the iron railing is very sturdy, and he only manages to saw a small opening. John falls into despair again, and kicks the iron railing with all his might. Unexpectedly, the railing is kicked through by John. Overjoyed, he sits on the edge of the balcony, looking down and then back at what's behind him. At least there is a glimmer of hope ahead. He prepares for a final attempt. Have you ever seen someone so bold? On the 35th floor, John slowly leans out over the guardrail, his hands trembling as he clings to the railing. A slight mistake could mean certain death, but the railing is too thin, and each one deforms slightly, with the weight of his body, making him unsure if it can support his weight. Before each step, he must carefully test his footing. He moves downward methodically, hand over hand, but John's strength isn't keeping up, 
and after only two floors, his hands are already weak, and his feet start to shake, he can only hang in midair, resting for a moment before continuing to climb, he doesn't dare to look down, as fear would make his limbs even less steady, finally, he reaches the last floor, the 30th floor has no balcony guardrail, so John has to go down directly from the 31st floor, but doing so is extremely dangerous, and the slightest error could cost him his life, a belt can actually save a life, John uses his belt as an extension rope, tying it to the railing on the 31st floor, he tugs on it with his hands, hoping it can withstand his weight, then, he starts to climb down along it, his feet are almost close enough to reach the balcony's outer frame, when his body hangs suspended in midair, John clings desperately to the belt, not daring to let go, thinking that he must not fail now, or else I'm toast, he stretches his body with effort and finally reaches a solid point, inching his way to the edge, with a leap, he lands successfully, but then he realizes that, the door to this apartment's balcony is locked, and he has no tools, in a frenzy, he kicks the door frame, and miraculously manages to break it open, finally, he emerges, barely clinging to his last bit of strength, as he descends 30 flights of stairs to the main entrance, the security guard looks bewildered as John, with his pants falling down, collapses in a faint, in the end, his girlfriend marries someone else, and John finds a new job, he revisits the abandoned building, where everything that happened has become a driving force in his life, the film ends here, the film is called Trapped, this film is worth watching, I recommend checking out the original, thank you all for your likes and subscriptions, see you next time, bye.